Good afternoon and welcome to a webinar from Linköping University. Uh, today we're going to learn more about why study at Linköping University or LIU as we call it. Um, we're going to have a European perspective. Um, so this is mainly aimed at EU nationals um, because there are different application rounds and, and EU nationals can actually apply in both. But we'll get to that a bit later. Uh, my name is Therese and I'm a communications officer and I'm here with two of our brilliant students. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, so uh, I'm Emily. I'm currently in my second semester of international and European relations here at LIU. Hi, I'm Agathe and I'm currently in my second semester also of design at LIU. And you're from? Oh, I'm from Germany. <laughs> and I'm from France. Yes, thank you, thank you. So, you know, you'll be able to give us the European perspective of, of studying here and, I mean, the application process and procedure is the same for everybody so if you are watching and you're not an EU student you know you'll still learn loads but but we're going to do it from a from a European perspective today um, so we're going to talk about why you should study here um, how to apply and mainly most importantly what it's like here because that's that's what you two can share um, a few housekeeping things. Don't forget to put your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, we'll have a look at them after our, our chat and we'll talk for about 25 minutes maybe. Um, so we'll answer that at the end. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded so you can watch it at a later date on YouTube. Um, but I think that's all you need to remember. So Q&A, not the chat. It's the most important thing. So tell us a bit more about yourselves. Why, why, did, you, why did you choose to come to, to LIU? Um, for my hand, uh, I couldn't find really what I wanted in, back in France. Um, I was searching for service design uh, courses, master uh, in France, and it doesn't really exist. So I kind of uh, looked in a broader perspective, and uh, through a service design community, I stumbled upon a message. Hey, by the way, there is a nice uh, master that uh, is existing in Linköping University and does service design, you should check it out. Mm -hmm. And I checked it out and I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to learn. So oh, good, good. I'm glad. How about you? Uh, for me, it was a bit different, I think. <laughs> I didn't look for a particular program in that sense. I was looking um, at like new countries to study in, actually. I was trying to get out of Germany and I had a lot of uh, Spanish programs before. Uh, so I was looking for something new and uh, yeah, I also kind of stumbled upon Liu in the end and uh, applied. How come you chose Sweden? I don't know. I've been here a few times before on vacation. It's been always really fun and also I feel like a bit the influence of uh, how the world sees the educational system here. It has a very good perception outside of Sweden, I think. So I was really interested in that as well. Okay. Um, what about the, the, the difference between what you're used to? Um, you did your bachelor in Germany? Partly, yes. Partly. And in Colombia? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's quite exciting to hear the difference there. And you did your bachelor in France? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What was the, what's, what's the kind of biggest difference? So for me, it's a bit com more complicated because I did a bachelor in France, so part university, part uh, design school. And I continued in design school. So um, I would say, Compared to the design school, here we have more theory uh, which back up what we're doing in our projects, which is super interesting. And compared to university, we have a lot less lectures and a lot, less, uh, a lot more uh, homework. We work on a lot of projects, on a lot of um, uh, papers, uh, reflections that we didn't do in university in France. Mm -hmm. How about yeah, you? I think my, my experience is a little similar because I think uh, I don't really have exams here, I re rewrite a lot of papers on my program, a lot of group work as well, um, and a few presentations, everything. So that was a big change. And uh, also a bit the structure of how the whole program is structured uh, is definitely different to what I'm used to in Germany. How different? In, in, in what way? Um, so for me, the main difference is that we only have one course. That is particular for my program. I think a few other programs are similar, I believe. Um, so we have four weeks or five, depending on uh, if there's like vacation days in between, on one particular course. So it can be uh, international theory or, or other things, and we focus on this for four weeks. And at the end of those four weeks, we have an examination that can be a home examination or a paper as well. Uh, and then afterwards, we're done with that. And then we start a new program, and it, it focuses on one topic at a time, which I sort of find uh, the better solution than what I'm used mm. to. Is it similar for you or do you have uh, courses in parallel? 
So no, we have uh, two courses that run through the whole semester and um, two courses on half semester. So one on the first half and one on the second half. We are switching right now. Okay, so you do three in parallel then. So three in parallel. Three yeah. in parallel. But we still, you know, it's a good thing you mentioned this because we, we still don't do the a course that runs the whole year with mm. end of year exams. We yeah. actually have exams throughout the year. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I've heard also from, <laughs> from different programs where you have um, maybe two courses at a time and like in the middle of one semester there's an exam period at the end mm. for the next two. So it mm. is... Not as stressful. I, I always felt a lot of pressure and a lot of stress during exam period uh, in Germany, where it's like a week with seven different exams on seven different topics. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very, very stressful. And here it's a bit more focused. I'm not saying that you don't have to study. No. You definitely have to put in the work anyway. But it's just very different. Uh, and for me personally, much more enjoyable to to. Yeah, you can take in what you're yeah. doing in a different way rather than just cramming yeah. and kind of just going, I need to get through these exams. <laughs> you're kind of a bit more, okay, you know, and, and, and I know. Um, so you're talking about the, the workload. So even if it's, it's not um, that many lectures or that many, you know, scheduled seminars, what's the workload like? So for me, for, for instance, on a six credit course, uh, I would have... Um, one lecture, maybe one seminar. Sometimes it alternates on one week on other, but it's expected that I put either on my own work or group work uh, at least a full day of work. Uh, mm. So like four or six, eight, six hours uh, on top of the lecture. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very similar for me as well. So one or two lectures a week plus seminars and it can depend if you have one or, or three seminars for example during one course you usually have to prepare for those seminars especially because it's either a group presentation and also a paper that you have to present yourself and this can be either a group written paper as well or individual and so you definitely have to prepare for those and for the lectures it's usually also expected to read a lot for me so uh, have mm -hmm. the background knowledge before going into the lecture so mm -hmm. that, that's where a lot of my time goes into. Yeah. So you shouldn't think it's an easy ride. You see your schedule and you go, wow, I only have to do like two hours, three hours, you know. Yeah. That's, don't get, don't be yeah. fooled by that. Yeah, don't be fooled. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. It, it, the, the mix between group work and uh, personal work is very interesting. It brings a lot and then you arrive in seminar, you're prepared and you can have actually a really nice conversation with the whole class. Mm. So mm. It's, it really brings a lot to the, you learn from each other. Mm. Uh, in this setting. How do you, I mean, how do you, I mean, I can imagine this, this it's, it's a bit of a challenge as well, that you have so much, there's so much emphasis on, on you being proactive. I mean, how mm. do you, how do you plan, do you plan? I mean, how do you make sure that you actually <laughs> do, do the, the work that you need to do? Um, I'm very rigorous on planning. I like to very much plan out my week because otherwise I will procrastinate a lot and that is definitely not something you should do. <laughs> um, so I like to plan out, okay, I want to work on this. If it's a paper, it has multiple parts. I might go, okay, on Monday I will focus on this part, on Tuesday on the next, Wednesday on the next, and then I will take the last two days to tweak it up and uh, put in the finishing touches before uh, handing it in. Mm -hmm. So I will actually st structure it like the same goes for readings. So if I know Tuesday I have to read three chapters, well, then the days before I will try let's mm -hmm. be honest mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. always stick to my schedule no, as well no, but, I, but this, this really helps me to to really put in the work mm -hmm. yeah yeah so for me like since i have a few classes at the same time i put the deadlines in my calendar but i'm also quite rigorous so i'm like week one week two week three like because yes in sweden we're talking in weeks also mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm like uh, doing week another numbers. view mm -hmm. uh, another view of like all the work i have to do based on the deadlines uh, in each course. And then I compute everything into one big table. <laughs> so I know like, okay, we're week 11, maybe 12 this week, I don't remember. <laughs> but, uh, I, and I put like, okay, for this class, I had to do this, 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 and this. And I had this lecture, and I do the same for every class. And so I have a weekly schedule. Uh, That's at the really, end. <laughs> really good. I know, it's, it's, it's oh, I think this is, no, but I think this is what you kind of do, because I think with, it looks like a lot of freedom. But yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I think otherwise you lose track a bit in the, oh, I only have two classes a week or like one seminar in like two weeks or something. And this really helps you to, to not forget the work. 
mm. and be overwhelmed in the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think what I've heard from other students as well is the importance of actually getting stuck in at the beginning, mm. of not waiting a few weeks when you get here and thinking, oh, yeah, it's new, it's fun, and then you all of a sudden go, oh, my God, I'm behind. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think a bit that happens to everybody a bit because it's exciting to get here and it's a new country for, for us at least. And it's <laughs> also sunny, so you still want to go out a yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> and meeting new people and everything, but um, yeah, you, you do need a schedule of some mm. sort. Mm. Mm. Um, let, let's talk a bit about uh, student life. You know, you said it's, it's uh, <laughs> you get here, it's fun. <laughs> What's student life like? Do you want to start? Yeah, I don't even know where to start. It's it's been a lot of fun. It's um, the one thing that also differs from where I'm from is the sections, for example, uh, that we have here. So every program belongs to a section. So they um, uh, they have events and like introduction every weeks as well, and you see them all around campus mm -hmm. and. Um, that was something new for me and that's something I've been trying to participate more in now in the second semester. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun because you get to meet a lot of people and also from, um, from different programs. And I don't know, for international students, um, the ESA and ESN do a lot of events where you get to meet people and yeah. uh, they do that throughout the whole year, so not just in the, in the beginning. So um, yeah, there's a lot to do outside of university as well in mm. Mm. definitely. Yeah, there is a lot of also student pubs that are really cool. Uh, some where you can play games, hang out, uh, meet people. There is also a lot of barbecues outside. So you can just like at the beginning of the year, it's like really nice outside. So you can just grab some things to eat and like meet around a barbecue. With, mm, which uh, is quite easy to make colleagues. friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like you, yeah. Say, you say to your classmates, hey, guys, like I was thinking of having a barbecue tonight. Like, do you want to come bring something? And, and, and you meet people. <laughs> and I believe ESN even has done them now in winter while there was snow. So oh, yeah. they still do barbecues yeah. I think <laughs> in it, winter. It's, it's very traditional here actually that you, you do make a fire somewhere, mm -hmm. kind of usually out in the, in the kind of woods or somewhere, and you, you grill sausages and yeah. you, you, you put like hot dogs and you put them on a stick and you're supposed to get a stick from the woods that you kind of sharpen Ooh. yourself Ooh. and then you just hold it over the fire and okay. eat. I think I've not done that. Yeah, as fancy yet, I but that with marshmallows, not sausages. Oh, yeah, well, marsh <laughs> yeah. When we last did it, my kids were like, "Where, where are the marshmallows?" And I'm like, "We're doing hot dogs today." But um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there's there's yeah. there's a lot of and stuff going on outside. Yeah, yeah, and even like um, you can go to other sections events, and you can also like just hang out at the library. The library is not like this. Like in most countries, in most cities, it's like very quiet and very calm. Uh, in the library, you can just come and like um, have your online class there if you have an online class, uh, or uh, just talk with uh, other students that came to uh, work there also. So it's a really nice hangout space mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. e a bit easier to study sometimes. <laughs> I'm there. glad, I'm glad yeah. you, you mentioned that because the student building, as it yeah. student mm -hmm. said, where the library is housed, was, was only, I think we, it was open 2018 yeah. yeah I think it's like really yeah. new and it was actually it was meant to be um, for the kind of central administration but the student I think the sections and the unions yes. actually you know put their hands up and went no we want a house for the students yeah. and so we want a building where, where you have your things and I think students were very much involved in the in the kind of creation of this space. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice space. Yeah, it's uh, very warm and cozy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also it has the most plugs, to be honest, because a lot of the, in a lot of the buildings, there's uh, tables to sit at and to work at as well, but there's no plugs. <laughs> because they <laughs> didn't need them 40 years ago when they yes, were built. Yes, when yes. those buildings were built. So the student set is also my favorite place to go and, yeah. and study. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there is also like what I really like about student two sets, a lot of different sitting options. So you can sit on a couch, you can Ooh, sit yeah. in a um, kind of closed um, seats mm -hmm. where you're um, not seeing anyone or you can maybe take a nap, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or just be like with less noise. Uh, you can sit at tables, you have like standing tables also. It's really cool. Mm. Yeah. Building. And you got lots of microwaves because I think a oh, lot of students yes. bring their own food. Uh, some of our friends have made the joke that uh, around lunchtime, which is 12 o'clock by the way in Sweden, <laughs> <laughs> also something to get used to, yeah. um, the student who said turns into a full-on restaurant, it smells so many smells of food. Everybody's heating up their food. It's yeah. very interesting because like you said, I'm used to having no food, only water in the library, nothing else. Not a word. Not a word. <laughs> complete silence. 
This is very different, but it's very fun as well. It's lovely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there are there are kind of rooms that you can book. So I think it's kind of you know it's very open in the middle, and then you kind of everything around this kind of open the stairwell really the yeah. stairs going up. And but then there's lots of rooms that you can book, and yes. if you do want a bit of peace and quiet. Both in student set or in uh, other buildings, you can book rooms uh, to have space for group work, for example, uh, when you want to be sure to have a table when you arrive <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. in exam session. It's mm. really useful. Yeah, definitely. And also, you have like usually a whiteboard, sometimes a screen. So it's like really nice. You have the tools to do group work. Mm. So. Yeah. What about your accommodation? Um, because I'm thinking, you know, you, you, you talk about, you know, people bring food, they heat their food, which obviously they cook somewhere. <laughs> or you yeah. cook somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so I live in a student corridor. There's uh, a lot, two different um, companies that offer student housing in form of a corridor. Corridor means that you have seven roommates, basically. So eight people living in one corridor. Everybody has their own, like, 20 square meters of a room plus their own bathroom. And then we share a kitchen and like a common area. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very nice. So I think a lot of students live that way. And it's a lot and it's all located in the uh, Ried. So it's, it's a very student prominent area. There's a lot of students around there. Mm -hmm. I have my friends living like buildings over. We can just meet up very quickly for a walk or something. So mm -hmm. that's really nice, yeah. So that, and then there's in Ried and there's other, a few other areas in Linköping as well. And obviously Neuschöping. Mm -hmm. But you have chosen a slightly different route. Yeah, I've, uh, I was very stressed of finding accommodation and like the um, student rooms were opening uh, a few months later uh, or I had to book for May, but I didn't want to pay rent for May. So I, I kind of searched on Facebook, uh, not Marketplace, but there is a Facebook group uh, for accommodation. And um, I, was, I found a, an, an house uh, uh, that the landlord has seven students in the house. So I could choose my room and <laughs> uh, so it's we have three uh, floors and it's really nice it's very homey feeling uh, our kitchen is a bit smaller than corridors <laughs> kitchens mm. but it usually works really well uh, and we share bathrooms but mm. it's on the other hand very very clean yeah. Because I was just going <laughs> to say, I'm betting your kitchen might be smaller, but it might be a little cleaner than ours, to be fair. Yeah. That is one of the issues with corridors, but for us, every two weeks somebody comes and yeah. cleans, actually. <gasps> and we try to keep it That's clean, nice. but um, yeah, and you said that you got a bit frustrated with finding accommodation, because yeah. I, was, I got <laughs> accepted and I was like, I need accommodation. That was like my first move. <laughs> but um, maybe I should have done that earlier because for a lot of these um, student housing uh, stuff, you need you're collecting points, and you get a point per day that you are um, locked not locked in, but you you have an account on their website. So if you were thinking about coming to Lee, you maybe sign up now already, mm. um, just to collect points. Even if you don't come, it doesn't matter. You're just collecting the points so that the possibility of getting a room is a little easier, um, and. Another thing, I didn't, I have an unfurnished room, but usually they are furnished, so they come with a bed, a shelf, uh, a desk, a chair usually, and a few lamps. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's also something to think of when you come here. Mm. Was yours furnished or? Mine was uh, furnished, I had still had to get a blanket, mm. but that's quite common uh, even in corridors, mm -hmm. uh, in furnished rooms. Uh, but the rest, we had cutlery, we had everything, so mm. it was a uh, just have to make a cleaning schedule and mm -hmm. we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, it's a really important point. Be, be, do register for housing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've got a whole page about you know, accommodation at Linköping University, student accommodation. Um, and it's free to register with the housing yeah. companies. Yes. And, and every day counts in, in yes. a way. Um, and if you, if you do it kind of now, you'll be ahead of those who, who, who do it once they are accepted yeah. um, so I think this is really important and, and sometimes you know there's still a struggle when you arrive in August and but we do have emergency housing and and usually after a couple of weeks or a month or so it's fine yeah, you know. I would say don't despair it because uh, I was in contact with some uh, classmates before coming here and they were saying like oh I'm coming but I have no housing <laughs> and they actually arrived and found something the next day so mm or a few days before arriving and uh, yeah. it's it's usually works out really fine in the end yeah, yeah. it yeah. might be a yeah. bit stressful but yeah, yeah. you can also <laughs> find more information on this on the student blogs of Liu 
So there's a lot of different perspectives as well from different people, mm -hmm. how they went on with their accommodations, like this is our mm -hmm. accommodation journey. Um, but there's a lot of information there as well, if you want to read up on that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called International Programme Students at LIU, isn't it? I believe so, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, no, International Programme Students at LIU. It's a ridiculously long name. I know. It is, but if you just Google International Student Blog and then put LIU at it, you will definitely find the page and yeah. uh, or the link towards mm. it. Mm -hmm. Before we talk a bit more, um, I want to just uh, show a couple of slides because obviously we do we do have more than two programs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do, we do, we do have a few more. Um, and I thought I'd I'd share uh, a couple of slides just to show you. Um, you can see here that uh, there's quite a few engineering and computer science programs. And when we started in 1969, uh, we actually started as an institute of technology. And became a university in 1975. So it's it's a it's a young university, um, which which means we. I think we, we, we are open to, to new things, you know, it, it's not the, the tradition from 500 years ago. Um, and I think you can see that in, in how we've uh, taken an, a cross-disciplinary approach in, in quite a lot of the things that we do. For example, uh, industrial engineering and management, uh, which we were the first in Sweden to establish in the 70s. Um, so there's there's also a, a kind of sustainability aspect in in a lot of what we do. I mean, even design, you know, has a sustainability. Yeah. So um, I think this is kind of a bit of our, in, if you say, hallmark, or you know, the bit, the bit where we stand out a bit in these thematic and and, and also the sustainability uh, side. We have thirty programs. Uh, there's twenty nine uh, masters program and one one bachelor program. But you can see them here, um, engineering, computer sciences, uh, computer science is one of our most popular programs, uh, also mechanical engineering is very popular, uh, and then we have your, your design, your design program there, and if we go to the next slide, Mm, there we go, yep. Uh, you'll see some of the natural sciences uh, programs that we have. Uh, I think applied ethology and animal biology, for example, you, the students end up going uh, to the, the near, it's not local, well it's, it's local to North Shopping, uh, where the university is also situated, but it's a big outdoor uh, zoo mm. and they actually go there and, and, and do some of their research. Very jealous. <laughs> yes, I think yeah, I, I am. Really a lot of fun there. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the conservation work again in, mm. in, in kind of, you know, looking at how to, to keep a lot of species that are on, on the brink of extinction. Uh, but if we have this slide again, sorry. Uh, the social sciences and humanities is the, I think that's the fastest growing uh, area actually. Um, Aging and social change is a new program for this year. Uh, we have your international and European relations. Um, I think that might be our third most popular program. Uh, business administration is the most most popular. I get that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a few of these are in in North shopping, strategic urban and regional planning, uh, ethnic and migration studies, for example, aging and social change. So, have a look when you apply at which campus you you have uh, most of your classes. Are you in in shopping? We we can. Leave the slide now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you uh, in mainly noise shopping or lean shopping? So uh, in my program, it's quite specific because we have um, two tracks um, in lean shopping and one in noise shopping. So we have some students in our class that are based on noise shopping because most of the classes are on noise shopping, uh, but mine are mostly on lean, in lean shopping. Next semester, I will have some in noise shopping. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so but yours are all here. Mine are here on Campus Valla. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's very nice to be on campus again, to be honest, yes, <laughs> because yes. we started in the COVID time still and of online course. a lot of stuff, but mm. it, it's uh, really nice. And at some point you get the hang of where to go. Yeah. And, um, and so, yes. <laughs> Yeah, That's finding true. the rooms. Yeah, I think there is a there's an app for that, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, because it's um, mm, yeah, I, I could probably do that as well. <laughs> but it's it's um, it's important to mention that there is a free shuttle bus yep. uh, between Lean Shopping and North Shopping at I think it's one or two an hour. At, yeah. at least one an hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really nice. It's really comfy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and it, I think it, it goes until 6 p.m. in the evening. Yep. I'm not sure when it starts in the morning, but around quite six. early. Yeah, okay. around things yeah. as well. Um, so it gives yeah. you time to, to get to your classes in, in the other 
in the other city. Uh, it takes yeah. about 45 minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. around, yeah, around there. And I've, I've heard from, from a few people who do this commute regularly that they actually get some work done on, on the bus as well. So. Mm. That's uh, good, good. Or get another mm. nap in if it's early in the yeah. morning. <laughs> <laughs> there are, I there mean, are there options. Are, yeah, there are options. I mean, there are regular, uh, uh, you know, buses as well, and 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 there's you got the train as well, but you'd have to pay for that. Whereas this is free for students. Yes. yes. Nice. Uh, it's very nice, exactly. Um, I'd like to, to talk a bit about the the application process um, because this is kind of the the bit where we we can bring in the European perspective shortly. Um, but how did you find the application process? So for me, the biggest difficulty was to make the transcript from uh, my school that so they were all in French and I had to translate them either in English or Swedish. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that was the um, main difficulty, like finding everything back and uh, putting everything in order to uh, have them translated, wait for the translation anxiously so it arrives in time and uh, submit it. And I would say also like one other thing is particular in design uh, master mm. is we have a portfolio um, mm. which is a set of images and text explaining different projects mm. uh, but it has to be written in English. Yes, <laughs> of course, yeah. But yeah, yours is a bit special so if you're interested in the design program you really read everything carefully because it, it's a slightly different and don't hes hesitate to reach out either uh, mm. the, the coordinator of the programs or uh, students on the Instagram accounts. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's fair. How about you? Uh, I actually really liked it because I did apply to other universities as well and I really liked the fact that I could do it all over one um, website oh. and I just uploaded all the documents once and I knew somebody they wanted the same documents so I didn't have to re-upload yeah. them and so on. But for this particular program, I actually also had to write a motivation letter. So to, mm. to why I want to study here and what I bring mm. <laughs> from my previous studies or so on. Um, that was one thing I was very worried about, but <laughs> it worked out fine, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think again, um, if you're struggling with that, just ask advice from, you know, have a look yeah. at the blog, Instagram. Um, I think it's, it's, you know, ask the students who are already here, who yeah, have already yeah. done it. They're all pretty yeah. helpful, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. no problem. I also ask a few questions on Instagram when I was applying because I got confused a bit. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of information to take in, mm, I think, at mm. some points. But uh, in the end, it's pretty straightforward once you get once you get going. Once you get yeah. going. Yeah. And for me, it was also a problem with uh, like translation because in Germany, I got everything in English immediately handed out, so it was all official already. But I had to transfer some... Um, some courses from Colombia, which were all in Spanish. So mm. <laughs> I had to uh, have that translated. And one thing, um, if you are currently still in your bachelor's and, for example, writing your bachelor thesis right now and want to apply or have applied, that you have a deadline, I believe it's at the beginning of November somewhere. First of November. Yeah, mm -hmm. first of November. Mm -hmm. It was the same for me. Uh, so you have a time frame to actually upload that so don't worry too much about not having your title right now right the yeah. second yeah. Um, yeah. there is time and um, yeah yeah it You'll usually works out in the end uploading everything yeah. there is also one other thing I remember now that uh, caused a bit of um, difficulties for me it was uh, proving that I was speaking English good enough mm. <laughs> that uh, I totally like when I first uh, thought of applying it was in December and then it was locked down in France, so it was really hard to find a spot to um, pass an English test. Mm. And then I moved in between, uh, so it was really complicated. And in the end, I read all the details because I found out that my French um, diploma from high school was sufficient to yeah, prove yeah. Yeah. that I, I was speaking yeah. English. <laughs> that there is one website that lists all the countries and like what specific English requirements, requirements thank mm. you. Uh, are needed so uh, I also went on that and I also <laughs> because I didn't have time to do a test either and then I saw oh my yeah, my, my high school yeah. I don't have to I I got this already this so is, just um, make sure there and this is the same website where you apply so it's yeah. university mm -hmm. admissions dot se um, so this is and this is where you apply for the first uh, and the main application round. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where you can apply for up to four programs, um, mm -hmm. but it's important you rank them, and that's important oh, yes. um, for those who are not European who are applying for, or wish to apply for a scholarship. 
Um, but if you're European, there are no fees, so you don't need to apply for a scholarship. Um, but you can choose four, um, same university or different universities. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's important that you have a look on that website because you have country specific information and as you said you know you'll find things like oh actually I don't need to worry about an English <laughs> test and or I had to translate my um, transcripts but I didn't have to transcript uh, to translate my diplomas ah uh, yeah so less okay, translation to do <laughs> yeah yeah well, there are certain yeah. languages exactly that that you need to to be aware of so country specific information is is really uh, uh, that's key yeah actually key, yes. yeah Absolutely. Um, I'm going to uh, go on to a slide about uh, some key dates um, because this is this is the bit where it, it can be complicated. Um, the, the the main application period, as we call it, um, is the one for EU and non-EU citizens, um, and that one is middle of October, and it closes. It opens middle of October, and it closes middle of January. And this one you apply through universityadmission.se or you go to the program page and you click on the apply now button and it takes you into the system. Um, early February, by 1st of February, you usually you have to send in all your, your other documentation. So the transcript, your diploma, and you also have to prove English, you have to prove your citizenship. Uh, if you want to be exempt from paying fees. Otherwise, you have to pay your application fee uh, by, this, by this deadline. The results are released early April, so 7th of April this year. And there's also an application period for the scholarships then. And then the, the fee payment deadline is, is 1st of June. So this is the kind of the, the main international round and it's open for everybody. And the benefit of this is that you do get your admission results in April. So you have more time to, to find plan, housing. to yeah. find housing, <laughs> yeah. to plan, you know, to, to exactly. Um, but if you're an EU citizen, you can also apply in what we call the second round or the, the national round, uh, which is open now. Um, and it closes on the 19th of April. So, and then you have until 3rd of May to prove your citizenship uh, and 21st of June to, to, have, to submit additional documentation. Um, the, the problem is you don't get your results until 12th of July, uh, which is why this, this um, application um, period is only really open for Europeans, uh, because that is too late to be able to get a, a residence permit. Um, so that's the kind of that's why we say this is only for EU citizens because it's 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 a waste of time for everybody else, um, and and for that you actually have to uh, accept your place and you need to do that by the twenty second. So they're slightly different, yeah. So you don't need to accept in the first round. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's an important point. So don't <laughs> w if you get the email and it says on the document it says you're admitted to the EU. Don't you worry. Don't worry. That's it. You can come here and, and you're going to yeah. go to what's called roll call, where they check who is coming in. There's no button to click that you accept this or something. Yeah. I was very confused and very worried that I misunderstood it and that I not actually accepted this place. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's don't worry scary. about that yeah. in the first admission round. That's the first, but the second you have to. So, yeah. so this is the kind of difference. Mm -hmm. But the second also you, you know, if you were, what was it? Was it the 22nd? I, I've forgotten already <laughs> how close this. Um, but you only really have a month to get here, which, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you're a Swedish student, you know, you might not be moving that from that far away. And, and you know, it, it's different. But you come into a new country and a, and a month is, is not very, it's not very long. No. Um, so, so that's kind of what we're, why we're talking about the two different application application rounds. But I think in both cases, when it's when you've accepted or just received the results, um, you s still don't get that many emails uh, before the start, <laughs> the actual start. So it can be a bit, uh, I don't know how to say, but y you're anxious to not to yeah. miss a step or something. Yeah. But actually, everything just, it's just that Swedish, Swedish administration is super easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, at least. In this part. <laughs> in, in this, this exactly, city. just in this, in thing, this yeah. part. Yeah. In this part, like, you don't have to uh, go and do a lot of paperwork when you arrive. It's just like, you come, you say, hey, I'm here. You get your card, you yeah. go to roll call, you say, you come to your class and you say, yes, I'm here. And that's it. 
Mm. Don't worry. This, but this is very, very important. <laughs> One of those things that you said, roll call. You yeah. must attend roll call or you must notify uh, the program mm -hmm. coordinator. And, yeah. and, and, and actually, you can't just notify. You actually have to have a written agreement, um, something in writing saying, it's okay for you not to attend the, the, the roll call because otherwise you will lose your place. So this is, this is important. The roll call and the roll call is different, different programs. So there'll be in April, there'll be a page uh, for admitted students um, and you'll find different dates there. But this is a really, really important um, date or you know, occasion to remember. Um, before we move on to questions, um, I just wanted to know a bit more about, you know, you're both Europeans and from a European perspective, uh, both, you know, kind of comparing yourselves to um, students in your country, but also to students from other countries who have, you know, outside of Europe who've come here. Come here. Um, how, is, is it different? Is, uh, you know, is there a difference? Is it easier? Is it, you know, harder? Or is it? I think on the bureaucratic side, it's easier for us because we don't need a, a resident permit or, or anything. Uh, so I know that a few of my friends are currently renewing theirs and they have to keep that up to date at all times and so on. So I think on that side, it's definitely easier. Otherwise, I, I don't actually know if they have a, if there's a big <laughs> difference. We all moved to a new country, to be fair. Mm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say maybe, um, I know that Asian uh, countries have some group uh, connections, so they actually have a community before leaving uh, their country. So if you're uh, from there, you can uh, look out. And like even um, with ESN and ESA, there is a lot of uh, groups that are created um, by countries, by uh, sections of countries to kind of find uh, people from your country and ask questions. Mm. Hey, mm. do I find this there? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you don't think there is a, a kind of uh, a, a similar culture in, in, in a way between, you know, this kind of EU project, you know, One Europe. Do you still feel that, you know, you're very much in a foreign country? Not that much for me, to be fair, because I think it's very similar to Germany. I think food is often an issue to get like similar uh, foods or products that you used to. For me, it's very similar here. So, um, and I mean, we haven't talked about the language yet, but um, you, usually you can get around in Sweden with English. Um, if you ask nicely and you're like, hey, sorry, I don't really speak Swedish. Um, they will usually switch to English, which is nice. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say like the only difference between your home country in Europe and uh, Sweden is like the language you will yeah. use mm -hmm. every, in everyday life. Um, also, one thing that surprised me, uh, second-hand culture, very <laughs> prominent here. Uh, you can find everything and of good quality, not just clothes and not just vintage clothes uh, in stores. And there is a, a lot of stores, so, yeah. and it's quite uh, cheap also. So mm -hmm. good. I think it's quite trendy, tip. and I yeah. think it's quite, you know, it's it's kind mm -hmm. of you know going in with you know this this the the whole culture of sustainability, mm -hmm. and I think. Yeah. I think Sweden as a country is very um, aware of the, the environment and the, the climate crisis. And I, so I think second hand has really kind of blown mm -hmm. up yeah. in the last kind of five years or so. Also for furniture, if you want to like make your room, <laughs> yeah, make your room yeah. a little more homier and so on. Yeah. You definitely find something there as well. Yeah. And that's a good, good tip because a lot of students leave here, you know, um, June, maybe May, June. Um, so that's a good tip to pick up yeah. things that they want to sell. Yeah, the EU even has its own second-hand store, so uh, there's a lot to find there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, we're actually going to see if we have any questions, and then I'm going to come back to, to you guys, because um, I have a couple more <laughs> questions for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Um, we have a question from somebody called Yael. Hello. Um, Someone is uh, interested in our masters, uh, but wondering about doing a gap year in between the bachelor and masters. Um, so basically, this is about delaying the start, uh, or will they have to go through the process again? Uh, yeah, we don't uh, we don't have a system of deferrals, so you know you you have to apply again. So you apply now, and if you're admitted, you actually have to to take up the the spot. 
Um, I mean, sometimes there, there, there has been like exemptions for medical reasons, but you know, it, we don't have we don't have a deferral system. So uh, you will have to go through the process again. I'm afraid. But if you are European, I would say you already have all your papers uh, ready for yeah. next time, so yeah. it's, it will be easier uh, yeah. if you have to go again. I think everybody has the papers that you upload; they're uploaded, they're in yeah. the system. Yeah. So you know it will be a lot easier. Um, but if you're a fee-paying student, you might want to really think about it because you don't want to have to pay the application fee yeah. uh, more than once. Uh, so I, I hope I hope that answered answered the question. Um, under another question, under what from Greg? Hey, for what conditions can somebody be a doctor? The level of grades, examination, specific subjects, subjects like biology, chemistry. Oh, um, if you're if you're talking about a medical doctor, so you know, actually study medicine. We only offer that in Swedish. Um, so have a look on our on our website. Uh, on the Swedish pages and it'll tell you everything that you need uh, but be aware that you do need to to, to learn Swedish um, and this is an important point that I actually forgot before is that if you want to apply in the second round you have to do that at antagonian.se so it's in Swedish that's the the extra argument for actually applying in the first round the second round it's all in Swedish we have created a a, a video um, where we kind of talk you through the different stages um, so you know, it's it's still kind of it's a sim it's the same system, but it's all the steps are in Swedish. Um, so that's the kind of downside. But the upside is you can apply now, <laughs> and the programs are open again. Uh, so that's the difference. Um, we have another question from Cecilia. Uh, the attachments also, for example, certification degree with exams credit should also be in English. Um, it's to do with exams credits. I think it depends on yeah. the country. Yeah, I think again it depends on the country. I think there are some languages that we do accept, like German and, and, and French and Swedish, obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, have a have a look at university admissions. Um, it says the paper. You know, it has explanations of all the paperwork that you need to submit and which language, what you need translations of. Um, I would I would put as much as possible in English. I mean, it's yeah. it's yeah. you know it's the safest. Yeah, and yeah. also you don't need to uh, or you shouldn't upload any uh, additional documents that aren't asked for, because I, I believe that they won't actually be looked at by the university. So stick to the stick to the documents, and then it's less work for you as well if you stick to to those yeah. required documents. Yeah, and you don't need to submit a CV. I mean, yeah. it's 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 basically you you you'll be assessed uh, on your your academic uh, merits. So there's no need there's no need for for uh, to prove your work experience, for example. Mm. Uh, the next question is from Samantha. Uh, can I upload all the documents online, or should I send the, uh, them physically? You need to upload them. Um, there are exemptions for some countries. So, if you had done your uh, your bachelor's, for example, in the in the U.S., your U.S. university has to send the uh, the transcripts and the diploma. They have to do that directly from the university to us. Um, so, again, it's important that you look at country specific information. Um, but but these are the the exemptions, really. I mean, the majority of everybody, you just upload. You uploaded everything yeah. yourselves, didn't you? Everything uploaded is everything. online. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the uh, if you don't have your bachelor's right, bachelor degree right now, also that you upload that again on the website mm. pretty easily. Just scan everything. Yeah, mm. and you upload originals, so you don't upload copies of the the originals. If you see what I mean, so it's the it's 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 you scan the originals. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so another question about uh, are there. Uh, Scholarships or any types of financial support uh, available for EU citizens who are struggling? Uh, I'm afraid we don't. We don't have any scholarships that cover cost of living. Um, so, I mean, and, and again, some students have a little bit of money through part-time work, but I think it's not something we recommend. Um, I think a few hours here and there. Yeah. Probably and it's also like quite hard if you don't speak Swedish to find jobs mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So that's something yeah. to keep in mind. Uh, so, so I think you should you should really have your your finances in order. Make sure you have enough money uh, to support yourself for the for the two years. 
uh, yeah. that you'll hear, unless you're doing a one-year program. But the majority of our programs are, are two-year programs. Um, so we have a question from Lucia. Good evening. Hello. Uh, I saw that there's an online master's in child studies. So will it be fully online? I know European citizens don't pay for tuition fees and application fees. Are there any other costs that we might have to pay for? Uh, child studies is it's fully online apart from I think child studies has one or two meetups so there's there's you have to be on campus uh, once or twice I think it's usually once per semester it's a one-year program as well uh, so but the rest of it is is fully online um, we we don't have any other fees you don't what do you no. pay for books but you y yeah, yeah if you <laughs> want but you can usually find them in, in in the library, yeah. yeah. But um, also a difference to, to, to us, we actually don't pay anything in Germany. You have a small fee, but mm -hmm. very, very, very small. Uh, not, and not actually for studying, but for something else. <laughs> but you don't have to pay, don't worry, <laughs> if you're Nothing. European or Swedish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the rest is just cost of living, um, mm -hmm. finding like you rent your groceries. Uh, and going out, mm -hmm. I would say. Do you pay for and printouts? If you need to print something, um, you pay yeah. for that? Yes, we but do. But it's quite cheap, uh, if I remember yeah, correctly. I, I think I uploaded like 50 crowns at the beginning of when I started. That's like the minimum you can uplo um, upload on your mm -hmm. card. Uh, and I, I, I'm still You're working still, yeah. down <laughs> there. So it's, it's quite easy to do that too. Okay. So it's good. So yeah, so no, no, nothing else if you're an EU student. Um, Alex is wondering, uh, what about EU students uh, doing their final year of a bachelor degree and they apply for a master's degree? Uh, what's the deadline for providing the final transcript records in case they're conditionally admitted to LIU? And that was 1st of first November. 1st of November. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's 1st of November every year. Uh, just, just double check the actual 1st or 2nd, you know, but, but it's, it's in November. So you, you have September and October. You usually start at the end of August. Yeah. So there's some time to do and that. And again, you just scan it in and upload it. And it for me, it took like a day, maybe not even for them to say, OK, yeah, we've got it. And then it said admitted. I was very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and somebody is wondering, what if you haven't found housing when you come to Sweden? So there is some emergency um, housing. So I know some students usually, because getting the keys in Skrader can be a, a bit of a difficulty mm -hmm. uh, if you arrive late at night uh, or on the weekends. Uh, but you can um, either find a Airbnb or a hotel uh, for a few days. Or if really you didn't find anything and it, you, can, you don't have the money uh, to, to spend on the hotel for like a few nights, uh, you can also um, go to the emergency uh, rooms uh, that are meant from Combo, I think. Mm -hmm. um, they provide you a room. You cannot leave your stuff there, but you, you can sleep there for a night or two or mm -hmm. as many nights you need <laughs> uh, until you find an accommodation. And I think the service is like around two, three weeks or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know a few people as well who didn't have accommodation or uh, one of uh, the person living in or who lived in my corridor um, she moved in pretty late so a few weeks later because I think the actual person mm -hmm. didn't show up or didn't actually uh, want the room after all so more rooms open up after maybe one two three weeks into the semester yeah. so um, then it's when you have to be on the lookout again mm. yeah. To don't despair. I mean, I, I yeah. haven't heard of anybody who sleeps in the street. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. So there's usually, I mean, and also kind of, you know, we, on, on Instagram, I think the plan is for the summer to do a, a kind of buddy match where you can actually, a matchmaking where you can, uh, um, you know, match with students on your program uh, who are also coming in the autumn. And together, I know some people have ended up getting flats together because th there are, there's a fair amount of accommodation available you're kind of on the normal rental market, if you say I mean, yeah. but it's expensive, but you could share. Or even something. on the student uh, market, mm. uh, there is a, the student housing companies also have uh, studios or uh, small apartments with two rooms or three, three bedrooms. Mm. Um, so you can also look 
at that uh, mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't find also like this matchmaking is a great opportunity to find someone to crash at also yes. for a few days <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. or oh, travel with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's important though, just to mention the kind of the, the, the marketplace or Facebook. Don't part with any money, any deposit oh, yeah. until you've seen the place. That's important. Yes. Yeah, I was quite anxious because in my contract uh, I was with a particular landlord and uh, I, it said like I had to pay before every month. But I actually like just ignore the message <laughs> and I, I had seen photos. I had talked with someone that I've lived there before, but I just waited until I was there and I see the room and I have the keys in my hands to say like, hey, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing this. But I think with student housing, like if it's official housing, yes. it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a little less risky. Mm -hmm. And maybe one more thing on paying rent in if you have student housing. I believe we don't pay rent in July and August. Mm -hmm. It's two months. It's two really months right. out of the year in summer where you actually don't have to pay rent. So mm -hmm. that's nice. maybe something to keep in mind when you think about your finances as well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's but a good point. Also something to know is that most common contracts start on the first of each month, not mm -hmm. in the mid uh, mm -hmm. month. So. Yes, that's a, that's another really good point because I, I think again you have, you know, the most programs start say twenty first, twenty third, or something mm -hmm. August. So you either have to be here first of August or first of September. So sometimes yeah. you you well, might actually want to go. Your contract, your contract at least. Uh, yeah, not you. the contract. You, you, can, yeah, you can arrive. Yeah, a bit you later. can arrive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can course, arrive on the fifteenth. <laughs> you just take a contract yeah, on the first yeah, and yeah. you pay the full <laughs> month. I'm glad you no Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> make sure if you, for example, I had to pick up my keys at the housing company. Make mm. sure they know when you're coming. Just be like, mm. okay, I'm gonna yeah. pick them up a little later, or yeah. Mm. And even if it's if you don't, if you arrive a, an evening or something, you can also ask uh, friends to or uh, mm -hmm. future comrades yeah. uh, to uh, pick up the keys for you, and uh, mm. that's also a possibility. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so kind of you know, reach out with your questions uh, just make sure you you have everything in and communicate you know let people know when you're coming in because i think these are important points but the contract exactly is first uh, of the month so it, it you do you know you could come early in august and kind of get to know lean shopping before you start or you have to find somewhere alternative and yeah. before the first of september and you can also find a contract and stay for a few months and then ch change to another place yeah. uh, yeah. that's also a a few students do that and to find like they accept the first things that they can get yeah. and then get uh, an upgrade a bit later on. Mm, like mm. Yeah, I think that's in, important. And important. I think it's for me, it's one month of uh, like before you have to um, cancel. No, has oh, you get one month's notice. Yeah, yeah one, one month's month notice. notice. Thank okay. you. Um, okay. So it's pretty easy. So it's, to it's do pretty this. easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty flexible. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd like to because because we you know we've got a we've got a few more minutes uh, left but um tips from you what do you wish you had known is there something kind of you'd like to go back in time and tell yourself from a year ago i uh, do this um i'm not particularly sure but one thing i would have liked to have known is the whole personal number drama oh. <laughs> and i think a lot of international students have struggled with this uh, so here in Sweden, everybody has a personal number and it's uh, connected to yourself and uh, it's usually your birthday and then four numbers afterwards. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole process to get this and it can take a long time. So I think as Europeans, you have to, um, one, have a passport. Very important. You need a passport and an ID isn't valid, apparently. You need a passport. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to show that you're insured. You can be insured in, uh, in your home country. That I am insured in my home country, health insurance. Um, then you also have to show that you will be staying in Sweden for more than a year. So if you are doing a one-year program, which is that we have a few of, um, you can't apply for this. But if you want to, if you're longer, it makes sense to apply for it. And um, there's a few more documents I think that you need to show, but um, that is a whole deal and it's very difficult to get the appointment to get the number. And this is also key if you want to have a bank account here or um, Swish, which is a, it's a way of transferring money here. Uh, everybody uses and especially in between friends. You just um, need a mobile phone number and yeah. you can just, you know, which is kind of connected to your bank account. And you yeah. just, if you have it someone's phone number, you can just send them some yeah. money. And yeah. Also bank, time. Yeah, <laughs> and also bank ID, which is a way of identifying yourself when you do online shopping, when you um, have some, uh, if you want to look at online documents, uh, 
book a doctor's appointment as well, actually. Mm -hmm. So these are things you really have to keep in mind and go for that early and try and get those appointments because they are booked out for months. <laughs> yeah, that's it, really. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Do you? Um, yeah, I was going to say on a social tip, um, just reach out to Swedes. Okay. They, they, like we, we hear, at least in France, we hear a lot about like, oh, Swedes or cold pe people. They stay with their friends. They don't meet other people. Uh, it might be on um, some part true, but if you just reach out and like go to see your classmates or uh, some people you've met uh, at an event and just talk with them and interact, and then you, you get to be friends with Swedish yeah. people, which is yeah. really nice. You get all yeah. the nice tips. Yes. <laughs> you do, and you get to kind of probably you know see the see all aspects of the culture yeah. mm. um, also helpful if you need somebody to translate from Swedish <laughs> to be fair uh, yeah, because sometimes yes. Google, yeah sometimes yeah. Google uh, translate isn't um, <laughs> enough <laughs> so sometimes it's, it, it's just pure comedy yeah, yeah. Um, mm. so sometimes it's nice to have somebody be like okay no this says this don't worry mm. it's okay and also understand this, the, the culture for example uh, students events how it works and oh, these yes, kind of things yes. having a Swedes at hand it's really useful mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think one thing yeah. to do with Swedish friends is obviously fika which is oh. yes. coffee and something like uh, yeah. Cinnamon, is it a bun or, something? or chocolate yeah. bowl or something yeah, chocolatey? Something mm. Sweet to eat with that. They're yeah. always up for that, to be fair. If you ask anybody up for fika, they're going to show up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think it's also somebody you can practice Swedish with. Try. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but because our programs are in English for me, we usually yeah. switch into English at some point. Uh, so, ah. and even if you try to speak Swedish, sometimes they will just answer no, in English. English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, like, I have this semester two classes where most of the um, group work I'm doing is with only Swedish people. Mm -hmm. So it's quite nice because I get to uh, interact with them. And like when they cannot find the words in English, they start speaking in Swedish between them, and I kind of eavesdrop and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. try to understand what they're saying. That's which is good. really nice to good. learn. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Do more of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, I think these are those are really, really uh, useful, useful tips um, to, to remember. So we have the personal number, you know, reach out, put yourself out there, don't be okay. shy. And accommodation, make sure mm. you, you, you sign up for that as early as possible. Um, we have literally a, a couple of minutes left. Um, has there been any funny culture clashes? Has there been anything that you kind of think, oh, what did I just do? Ooh. I, I had one that where I spoke to a student yesterday and he said when, when he came here, he had prepared with lots of cash. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was very cashless. No. But he had loads of cash. Um, so he was basically, you know, he still has cash left from when he arrived in August. So, and, and sometimes when you do need it, when you sometimes buy things secondhand, maybe from people. Um, um, but he's been like some kind of informal bank trying to give people cash. <laughs> yeah. So I have held cash once. I found 10 crowns on the floor in Stockholm. That is the only time, I, I'm not kidding, this is the only time I've held cash on my hand while I'm in Sweden. You can pay anywhere with card, even nowadays with your phone. Yeah. I usually do that, I pay with my phone. It's no problem. And now that I have Swish as well, I don't even need cash if I like, um, yeah, yeah, have yeah. a second hand, like if I want to yeah. uh, buy something from someone else. So uh, really don't bring cash. <laughs> Sorry, but don't. It's a very digital <laughs> yeah. society. Yes. So, you know, the, the bank IDs and the Swish, it's all this, these parts are, yeah, you yeah. know, it's important. Yeah. It's yeah. really important to a Swish and I hope I have it. <laughs> soon, <laughs> soon. soon. Um, do you have anything you want to add? Another tip that you kind of just, oh, I just thought of something? I go for it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not try? Why not come to Sweden? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fun here. Yeah, and also for transportation, uh, you can use a bike. Uh, yeah. Lin shopping is a very bike friendly city. Uh, the bike and walking paths are separated from the main uh, road traffic. Um, on completely different networks, uh, which is super nice. Uh, yeah. mm. You don't see even cars some days. Yeah. Mm. Just and make sure you have lights, please. <laughs> yes. Be you safe when you use the bike. And then not to mention the fine you get if you don't have lights. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> the police will fine you. Um, but it is also the good thing about a lot of the kind of the bigger bike paths are 
um, underneath is the the big pipes for the uh, the kind of the heating, which yes. is is you know there's big heating pipes coming out. It's it's the central system, but you know so even in the winter they'll be clear of snow and ice. Unless you have a snow snowstorm for like five yes. days, yes. Yes. And <laughs> once, yeah. But like Fair unless enough. that happens, and even then you can kind of bike. Yeah, uh, it's usually cleared. Yeah, and yeah. there is no ice, and it's yeah. really nice. Avril is, is, is close by, you yes. know, where the most students and live. Even from, I would say, any accommodations, student accommodation uh, in Lin shopping, the city centre is like 15, 20 minutes uh, maximum by bike. Yeah. Yes. yes. I, think, so. I feel like everything is maximum distance, yeah. bike 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so it's a good thing, get a bike yeah. as, soon as, as soon as you get here. Um, thank you. I'm just going to I'm going to wrap up. Uh, so so just a reminder that if you are an EU student, you can apply now. It's open until the, the 19th of April. Um, have a look on our how to apply pages. There'll be a video there uh, that talk you through the, the, the process in Swedish. I know we, we don't make it very, you know, <laughs> welcoming in that sense. Um, and if you have questions, reach out to us. Uh, the, the quickest way of getting an answer from us um, at the administration is to answer an email that we've already sent you. So, you know, when you were invited for this, uh, for example, you know, you just hit reply to that and, and that's the quickest way of getting an answer. Um, you can also talk to our students, Instagram and the blog. Uh, ask them uh, if you have any questions. There are no no stupid questions. Uh, you know, every question is a good question. Exactly. They've, they've been where you are now. Um, so so do ask them. And we haven't mentioned the podcast, which is actually called yes. Fika with us. Yes, true. Mm. Every two weeks on a Friday, you yeah. will uh, find a new episode there on topics that might interest you. And yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hear from both of you in, in there. Yeah. I think. Yeah, we listen to both of you. Um, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye for today. Um, thank you uh, very much for for, for joining me, uh, and thank you uh, for your questions. And, and I hope you found this useful. Uh, the recording is 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 on our website. Thank you.